so a great force exploded toward Mortain, hoping at Avranche to achieve the sea and drag our hopes down to the smoking ground. August 1944. After the Normandy invasion of June, the German high commander was prepared for a massive counteroffensive in an attempt to throw the Allied armies back into the sea. Hitler and his generals moved massive amounts of armor and infantry into the area of Mortain in northwest France. A huge amount of troops ascended on the area, yet it was the US infantry divisions that held strong. Anti-tank companies, 3rd Battalion, 120th Infantry and 30th Infantry Division. They set up a roadblock adjacent to Hill 317, where the 2nd Battalion and 120th Infantry was dug in directly north of the town of Mortain. The anti-tank guns that were stationed there were responsible for destroying over 40 vehicles during the action and stopped the German onslaught in the area. Yet on the 7th of August, August, the roadblock was surrounded and bypassed by the German forces. Around 700 of the US infantry were only protected by a ring of artillery fire. This kept the Germans at bay, at least for now. The next week, however, the 35th Infantry Division attacked the Germans from the southwest, relieving the besieged troops at noon on the 12th of August. In one of the outstanding small unit achievements in the war in Europe, the defenders held out for six days, sustained 300 casualties, but denied the enemy a key objective. For their valiant actions, the 120th Infantry Regiment was awarded the Presidential Unit Citation. It was a key moment coming up to the end of the Second World War. And soon, we're going to be able to play it in Hell Let Loose. It always feels like a bit of a strange thing, going in and recreating these battles that real people died in, and real counteroffensives and war strategies happened. But Hell Let Loose seems to be able to do it in a way that seems rather authentic to the time period. And that's what they're doing with Mortain. Recently, Team 17, the developers behind the game, have released a look ahead to 2024. It's not a full roadmap, but it's everything that we can expect at least in the near future, including a new map, a new rework of some of the massive UI systems that have been in, and of course, a lot, lot more. So, without further ado, let's take a look. First of all, there'll be a new commander uniform inspired by the US Army officer George Patton. It looks gorgeous. The leather and wool coat, and of course, those knee-high boots. I can't wait to be running around as a commander with this iconic look. And this kind of comes on to a little bit of some of the UI changes that we'll be introducing to the game. Going into 2024, they're going to be cleaning up some of the key UI elements that can cause poor user experience across the title. The tactical map will have an overhaul. There's been lots of considerations surrounding all the aspects of the design, but their main focus was highlighting the most important information, reducing clutter and providing clarity on the state of the game. And here are the designs that we have so far. This is of course from the commander perspective, but it shows us some of the things that everybody will be able to see. In the top bar, we can see the changes of how the points are being taken. The blue indicating how much allies have been in that area and are taking that point, and the red indicating what the enemy currently control. It's a little bit more simple and is a design that I'm not sure needed to change within this, but it is an element that makes it a little bit more obvious. Playing as the commander, if anyone hasn't already, you have the option to drop in resources, change nodes around for different fuels and dismantling garrisons. You can also bring in armor, equipment, and of course, those famous bombing runs or airstrikes. These are so many different aspects, and I think to any new player, trying to get into commander is a completely daunting experience. So they've tried to change that and improve it somewhat. Here we can see the locations that you can drop certain things in, whether it's airheads, supplies, so on and so forth, or of course vehicles. This was always a confusing thing, since there wasn't any indicators into the actual areas you could put these vehicles or supplies or airheads in previously, you just sort of had to know which squares and which segments were currently under control, and how far away from your own troops or into enemy control that you could place certain things, especially when it comes to airheads. Now they've made it a little bit more obvious, highlighting the friendly and enemy areas. Not only this, however, having a different version of selection and dropping in certain things. For example, if I wanted to drop in some supplies, I click on the supplies on the right hand side, I click on the segment or place I wanted to drop it, then I'd have to go back to the right hand side and click confirm. It was all a bit finicky and the UI elements were just small enough where if you didn't know that this was how you drop in things, it would take you a little bit of time to work out. Now it's way more obvious. It seems like you just put the location of where you want to put something, in this case an airhead, and you just click confirm supply drop at the top. 
easy said and done on the left hand side we have a key for everything in the game so you don't have to just know all of a sudden what a supply drop looks like what an armor drop looks like what kind of heavy medium and tank looks like on the map that is now in a legend on the left hand side and of course we still have our munitions manpower and fuel on the left these are all things that are mostly going to affect the commander since you spend a lot of time in this screen but i'm assuming these changes will come to pretty much stock infantry maps as well without the option to call in orders it's a good change and i think we'll be able to really see when we get our hands on it but making it easier for new players is always something i support as much as some people might complain it's dumbing down the game in this case I think it's just making it more accessible. Another uniform that's coming in is the US Infantry Winter Uniform. Of course, a coat is covered with the residue of the frozen conditions, something that they've been doing a lot, changing the British uniforms in the desert of El Alamein, changing some of the Russian uniforms as well. And in this case, it looks like they're gonna be doing that with a lot of the US. One of the OG factions that hasn't quite had enough love in the last few months. Continuing the aim to try and get new players on board, we have the field manual. This will be something within the menus that you can actually see a complete description of all the vehicle roles, recon roles, ammo types, all the weapons that you can use, and damage types as well, in case you want to get into that juicy nature of the, the game. It's everything from player awesome. communication, combat, deployables, vehicles, equipment, game objectives, and even just how you start. They introduced the tutorial a couple months back, and I think that has been a great success for bringing it to a wider audience. This is just another attempt to do that. How Let Loose is a game that started off as a hardcore simulator, and over time has come a little bit more casual and towards focusing on the mainstream. In some cases, I'm not too happy with that. The skirmish mode that we've started to see the playtest environments come out, I think looks awful. However, stuff like this that doesn't affect the actual gameplay, but helps people understand the simulation aspects is what is needed. Not dumbing down in the mechanics, but helping people understand them. There's been reworks to the fire and of course some other aesthetic things like on Purple Heart Lane. The rain VFX has been enhanced and puddle placements will be procedurally generated, improving the look of that map. Not that anyone really plays it. In terms of vehicles, there's going to be a primary British cruise attack coming in. This is one of my favorite as well, the Crusader Mark III, with its hefty gun that can take out some pretty heavy armor in some cases. Not only this, but it's got a shorter reload time of six seconds, meaning that it's gonna be able to finish off medium and light tanks with ease, and of course, cause absolute havoc to maybe even the heavier of vehicles. It will be used on El Alamein, and of course, we have that desert camo, which does beg the question Question. That being a very open map, this is going to have to be something that you'll use tactically and not just sit on top of a hill because that can still be easily taken out by a Panzer IV or a Tiger. So using this tactically is going to be very deadly, but you need to know what you're doing. Another part of the British rework is introducing the Gammon Bomb, and no I don't mean Keith down the road, but I mean a new replacement for a Sticky Bomb. It's a volatile grenade known for being temperamental and dangerous. It serves as an improvised alternative used for destroying parked aircrafts and vehicles. Hopefully this is going to be able to do some damage to things like supply trucks or even light tanks or recon vehicles because that's always the nature of the game. When you're in a sticky situation and a recon vehicle is around you and there's nothing you can do as infantry unless you have anti-tank on your side. That is part of the tactics and planning when it goes into forming your squads but maybe later down the line unlocking something like a, a light grenade that could actually deal a little bit of track damage. Not blowing the entire thing up like an anti-tank can do but maybe just being able to disable or deter some of these light recon vehicles on the enemy team. And finally, we get to Mortain. We covered it at the start of this video, but it will be historically recreating everything that happened during that time. It was an incredibly important holdback for the German army to try and stop their offensive. There will be the main area, which is the Petit Chapel Saint Michel. That was my incredible French accent, and I know there will be no one that's offended by that. There will also be Hotel de la Poste. Uh, once again, you can compliment me on my French accent later in the comments please but don't feel like you have to this will be a nice mix with open fields urban environments but more importantly dense forested areas this has been the first map that since the team 17 acquisition of how let loose that has been built from the ground up they've updated foliage that allows for dense forest areas hopefully not impacting performance hiding in bushes forests tree lines and of course setting up those famous anti-tank guns this is a map to look out for, and I think it could be on one of the main rotation ones. A little bit along the lines of a St. Mary and Glees, this in Mortain looks like it has the potential to be a great 
in the roster of Howl at Loose. But let me know what you think. Is this something to look forward to in the future? I think Howl at Loose is starting to get back on its feet and go in the correct direction. And especially adding in an interesting map and environment like this, there's definitely a lot to look forward to.